Hello, it's me, J. Africa's Last Dance, the channel where we're getting from the head to the heart. That's the travel we're interested in here on this channel. We're not interested in going to Hong Kong or Shanghai or to Moscow, uh, Paris, London, uh, Sydney. We're interested, those are going to have to wait. We're interested in moving from this head to this heart and becoming a heart-centered being, creating a heart-centered world. That is, a, it's a palpable shift. It's a palpable different. And these things, uh, as well as just consciousness growth, uh, spiritual growth, is going to be the savior, okay, of us, okay? And we're going to get into a little bit of uh, tit for tat here in a moment. But uh, uh, this is the things we need to do, okay? And this is the things that we will do. Uh, and I'm going to do it right in front of you, and you're going to see me transform and you're going to want to do it too. You understand me? Maybe not right now, but at some point. Uh, look at, uh, there will be no work done here today. No effort needed, discipline required for as I fall back into these exercises and relax. Staying in each breath, staying in each moment, each and every movement in love and in joy. Ever the sharp eye to slow everything down, creating inner space. So the universe can come to me, work through me, doing these exercises for me and for the larger community. No, there will be no discipline required here today. Remember that one, okay? We do go through that every once in a while. We will continue to do so. This morning I was stretching and I had no life. None. It was, I was just in a low mood, basically, and it's going to come and go. Things like that are still going to strike us at, at some point. And it was a lot of labor, a lot of effort, and a lot of work, and a lot of joylessness. And that's not good enough, okay? Especially with the, the way I do these, generally speaking, which is full of, you know, life and love and, and, and excitement and, and, uh, and those types of things, generally speaking, more or less. Uh, and uh, so I'm telling you, to do these, you know, the things we have to do, the stretching and med meditation and breathing and, and exercise, all things, we have to do them with a sense of joy, okay? Uh, it's not enough just to do them because we have to do them. It's not going to last that way. We have to find a way to do them uh, uh, effortlessly with some joy and some love, okay? And that mantra I've just said is going to help you do that, okay? And like I say, we, we do fall off every once in a while, uh, and that's how I felt this morning. And uh, I, I, was, I realized how inadequate that truly is. Uh, now look at, uh, let's talk about our weaknesses for a minute. We have to get acquainted with and learn to accept our weaknesses in self, okay? Everybody on earth has weaknesses. And we um, uh, avoid our weaknesses. We don't do things. We don't live life to a large extent because we're afraid of our weaknesses being exposed. Okay? And uh, uh, that has to change. Okay? We have to embrace our weaknesses. Okay? Uh, and love ourselves through the weakness anyway. That's the lesson there. I have been in a heart-centered reality with the help of psychedelics before. And let me tell you something. The weaknesses that you notice in that state are no big deal. They're really, they're, they're not much different than the strengths you notice you have when you handle things something correctly in, in, the, in the situations you find yourselves in and something like that. And uh, 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 you just n take note of the weakness as a temporary reality that you accept and you acknowledge and you attempt to understand where it came from. You allow and you don't resist, okay? Uh, and... Uh, uh, but they're no big deal, okay? They're just parts of you that are a temporary reality we have to acknowledge and then uh, heal and then get beyond that weakness, okay? Uh, and it's totally normal to have weaknesses as a human being in this 3D reality, all right? So we have to understand that and shift the idea of us not wanting to see our weaknesses. Uh, we uh, would be a tremendous help too is to ignite our sense of personal innocence. Okay, we have to get back to us as being innocent children of God, okay? Because our innocence takes a big hit as we move through life, the things we've done we're not happy with, our pleasure-seeking things we've done that we're not happy with. Uh, uh, and we have to, we, we get to see ourselves as a little bit jaded, you know what I mean? A little bit tarnished. Uh, and that is just what happens in the mind-centered reality. And we have, as we move to the heart, we're going to reclaim our personal innocence. As we look at a child, a, a child isn't innocent because he doesn't do anything wrong or doesn't have any areas that, you know, need a little bit of work. A child is innocent because he is what he is. 
and he's, he doesn't hide himself. You know, he just he doesn't feel the need to hide himself. He just is what he is, and and, and uh, you know, it, it, it's a great innocence that you notice in our children, and that's uh, uh, what uh, uh, we have to understand about ourselves. We are still innocent children of God, and uh, that is a tremendous boon to our uh, vibration and our frequencies and our sense of self-acceptance and self-love is the idea that we still, amidst all, amidst all the mistakes we've made, we're still innocent, okay? We have to see ourselves as innocent. And sometimes and sometimes people some, to do the most heinous things, hard to do this, but to realize that they're uh, innocent too, in a way. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, as we expand, uh, that's what we're going to come across uh, with. Uh, okay, we're gonna um, uh, we're still gonna hit the intellectual thing for a minute. Okay, I still have a few things I want to point out, uh, and we're in the intellectual sphere right now because we're uh, in the in the in this phase of of what keeps us magnetized to our mind, focused, uh, 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 affinity, you know, affinity to our own mind, and what keeps us there. Uh, and we've gone through a series of things. Intellectualism seems is is one of them. Okay, one of the things that keeps us uh, focused on our mind, uh, keep us att attention on our mind, and running things through our mind as we apprehend the world around us. Okay, uh, I was surprised that uh, there is this uh, cone. You know, we've seen it. It's a cone like this that has all the. Uh, uh, all the different states of being, okay, uh, from the lowest to the very highest, okay, uh, uh, fear, uh, guilt, shame, those are kind of the lowest, uh, Christ consciousness are kind of the highest, uh, cosmic consciousness, and, uh, and by the way, if you're ever feeling in any way shame or guilt, get out of that thing as quickly as possible, there's no excuse to feel shame or guilt about anything in your life, okay, that's the lowest of the low, and you have to find your way out of those types of things, many people live shame-filled lives, guilt filled, you know, and uh, 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 those are the worst, those are the lowest, and you have to find yourself uh, uh, out of those, okay, quickly, that's my recommendation to you. Uh, uh, as we move up that, that, that cone, uh, reason now is just below love, reason, love, and, you know, I was surprised when I saw that, because reason is a mental activity uh, uh, that, you know, I say, you know, are, are very limited in a certain way, but re their, their reason was right below love. So uh, reason then, the ability to reason, uh, teaching reason and the tenets of reasoning uh, is a very valuable tool, uh, using reasoning as we make it through life. Uh, reasoning is different from intellectualism, but reasoning is too is guided by a certain wisdom, a certain uh, 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 reality of, of wisdom uh, that that uh, allows that reasoning to uh, be potent in this world. Okay, what I mean? Uh, and uh, uh, so, so, so reason. You know, if we really thought of our students the way we should be thinking of them, we wouldn't be indoctrinating them into ideologies and belief systems. We'd be teaching them how to reason for themselves uh, uh, and give them a potent tool. Uh, uh, to uh, uh, assess things for themselves. And then we can say, look, there are different ideologies, different ways of looking at these types of things and, and allow them uh, to move through them using their own critical uh, uh, reasoning skills. Uh, 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 and uh, that would produce a much, much better student than what we're producing now, okay? We're, we're, we're indoctrinating, we're brainwashing our kids. That's what higher education is, academia is actually doing. And they're coming out the less for it. Uh, there, uh, the uh, uh, the professors in in, in, in our uh, in academia, and, and they're they're forcing themselves on their student. They're pressing their personal trips on the students. Okay, and and they're brainwashing them, and, and they're not really uh, concerned about producing uh, the best student. They're they're concerned about forcing themselves onto the student. That's what's going on in academia, higher in, uh, institution, especially in the humanities section. Science is different, uh, but in in the area of ideologies and belief systems, that's what's happening, and that's why we have. Uh, uh, students that aren't healthy, okay, they aren't healthy, they've been brainwashed and they've been uh, 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 forced with ideologies that uh, have a kernel of truth in them, but they can't, apparently don't have the ability to think beyond, okay, uh, and they accept them and they uh, uh, view the world then through these limited ideologies and they uh, become trapped in these ideologies, basically, is what's been happening. Uh, uh, pure intellectual, intellectualism 
was never meant to take a lead in understanding this world. Never. It was meant to be the follow-up. Uh, it was meant to explain uh, uh, areas of growth that we undertake toward wisdom, toward God, toward expansion, toward a higher, higher vibration and frequencies. It was, ex it was meant to be a follow-up, to explain what that's all about. That's what intellectual is, is all about. Jesus himself said pure intellect or the, the pursuit of pure intellectualism is a form of stupidity, okay, when he is coming from a love center, you know. And th those are words right out of his mouth. Uh, I've, I've uh, listened to some of the uh, transmissions I believe our Jesus coming through right now. And that's, he, that's what he said. He said he, intellectualism is a stupid, stupid tool in and of by itself without sort, sort of guidance uh, 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 from a higher source, okay. Um, uh, yogis understand uh, intellectualism as that also. They, they understand that it's a very thin veneer and a very inadequate uh, 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 process to try to understand uh, the world we have around us. Uh, there is, in texts that I've read, uh, spiritual texts, good texts, time-honored texts that speak of the darkness of the intellect. Pure intellect kind of takes a darkness uh, about it because it, it it wants to think that that it is the thing that is going to interpret and get us somewhere when actually in a way it's it, it, pure intellectualism is a denial of God in a way uh, the uh, they have their the intellectual or uh, intellectualizers uh, have their ego stimulated and they uh, uh, they 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 think that um, uh, the intellectual process. Is the is paramount and superior to all other processes, and it just simply is not true, and never has been true. Uh, 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 it's a it, it, it's a darkness um, that um, uh, is being perpetrated, uh, and I can see it as a limited process uh, uh, one that is really divorced from the proper movement toward God and toward spirituality and toward expansion, toward higher frequencies, and higher resonances. Okay. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, it was never intended on, on they, they think in the academic institutions we have in America, they think that uh, uh, intellectualism is the leader, you know, you know we're, we're the leader with, you know, with uh, all these intellectual uh, uh, ideas, uh, and uh, they, there's a certain dark hue uh, about them that creates more problems than it solves, okay? Um, like I said uh, in the last video, uh, uh, very, very smart yogis say that all these complex uh, uh, philosophies and, and ways of, 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 of taking apart the world uh, uh, and ideologies are unneeded and unnecessary to where we really want to go. They're the ones to know, okay? The yogis are the ones to know. Uh, what, is, is being hap what has been happening in our uh, intellectual institutions is... Uh, 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 academia is they're coming up with all these things just at, at a point when humanity needs to all join hands and begin to figure things out and move forward. Academia is coming up with all these ideas and all these concepts and intellectualizations that are holding us back, that are holding, ha having us fight with one another. Uh, uh, certain concepts, uh, right, white privilege, that's a big one, uh, coming from uh, academia, white privilege, all, all whites are privileged, uh, and they subjugate, or they, uh, in contrast to the, to, to the browns and blacks that, that are lack this, this in club, this particular uh, uh, privileged status, you know what I mean? Which, you know, there is some of that going on, uh, but what about uh, Asian privilege? What about Indian privilege? Those two races are doing better than per capita than the whites are doing. What about the, their? What about that idea? Uh, uh, and uh, uh, the, the idea tends to suggest that all whites are uh, advantaged with white privilege. You know what I mean? Now, I'm I'm white. You know, my mom comes from Chile, but I'm essentially white. I know a lot of whites that have no idea what the hell white privilege is all about. I have not led a life of privilege, okay? I haven't, and a lot of whites haven't, okay? And so to, to state that in that way is, 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 is a lie, number one, but it's a wedge. It, it, it begins to um, uh, 
bicker, make us bicker between one another. And the, and the Browns and the Blacks want some of that white privilege, you know what I mean? What about I get? And uh, uh, it's just a concept that has been taken uh, 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 in, in, a, in a blanket way and suggests that all whites have a privileged status and the others don't, you know, which is just a lie, okay? It's just a big fat lie and they're pressing it as the truth, okay? Uh, critical race theory, a theory that uh, all whites are the oppressors, browns and blacks are the victims of the uh, oppression, and they're doing the stupidest things in honor of the stupid theory here uh, that uh, would state in that blanket way that all whites are the oppressors. Now look at there does seem to be a bit of a streak in whites that team tends to want to dominate and subjugate, okay? We can look at that through history and see that, yes, there is a certain streak about that. But to claim that uh, uh, all, all, all whites are in that category and all browns and blacks don't, you know, aren't, uh, 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 are, are just victims and there, there's, there's no black or, or whites that uh, are subjugators or, uh, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Um, you, know, it, you know, that's just a, a, another sort of lie that's, that, that you can understand where it would come from, but it, it's applied in such a way as to create a lie. There, in, in, in all, all the ideas of race uh, relations, they're claiming that uh, uh, there's uh, institutional racism in, the, racism in this country now, and that's the reason why blacks aren't doing well. Okay, because there's institutional racism and critical race theory that has them all subjected uh, to the white man kind of a thing, and uh, uh, that is is just a lie. And you know, look at look at in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, there was institutional racism. There was back then. Okay, it was hard to be a black person because you're excluded, whites only, colors not allowed, all that whole thing. You know what I mean? Uh, and there and there uh, there was institutional racism back then, but we've come a long way since then. And I'm telling you right now, personally, there is no institutional racism trying to hold the black man down these days. Okay, the black, our black brothers and sisters, people that I love have plenty of issues of by themselves that isn't, aren't caused by the whites uh, in this society. Okay, uh, 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 blacks, um, I, I've been in, in poor black neighborhoods. I know what goes on in those poor black neighborhoods and they have a lot of issues that have nothing to do with whites. That has everything to do with them. And the, 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 the main factor uh, in, in why blacks aren't doing so well is themselves. These days, it's themselves. But we can't say that. Okay, I can't say this out there without being canceled. You know that 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 the blacks' issues largely these days are because of the way they handle things as a race and a community in this country. Okay, that's what the truth is, and uh, but you can't say that. You know that's what I mean about you can't say the truth. In other words, these things have us being divorced from truth and being able, divorced from being able to say something like that while being called a racist and now not racist. Okay, uh, the, the, uh, look. Blacks, 65% of blacks in these, in these black neighborhoods don't have a father in the home. Okay, so that, because of that reason, they don't have a strong father. They're floundering. Mom, mom, sometimes the mothers handle it quite well. And you got to give your heart goes out to those, these black mothers that are doing the best they can with their kids. But uh, they, they don't have fathers. They don't get the discipline they need. And they're floundering. And they're, they're joining gangs to, to, to get the support they, they, they think they want. And it's, a, and it's a big, stinking mess. And they have a ways about them that, uh, that aren't as forward-looking as some of the other races. Compare an Asian family with a, a black family. Okay, generally speaking, you know what I mean? I'm not to say there aren't some good black families, there truly are. But uh, there is a great difference between the way Asian handle things, or Indians for that matter, from India, and the way blacks do. Okay, there's no comparison between how those uh, 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 races handle their uh, communities. Okay, none at all. And they're trying to have it so that, that blacks aren't responsible for themselves. Somebody else is responsible for their for their plight, and they don't seem to mention that a lot of blacks seem to be doing fine. About half the blacks seem to be doing pretty well, as well as anybody. It's just another, the other half that is squandering their life in these uh, 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 communities, uh, these poor communities, and they're uh, 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 
doing all these sorts of things that are simply shortening their life. They'd rather go down in a blaze of gunfire than trying to pull them uh, pull themselves up and understand how they can be a productive member of the society. And it's not because of critical race theory. It's not because of white privilege. It's not because of, of, of race relations that have been skewed against the blacks. It's, it's their own fault. But you can't say that, okay? You can't really say that because of the way things are coming out of the universities, okay? They've got it locked. They're, they've got these lies locked up that are tending to break us apart and to bicker and fight against one another. Uh, Antifa. Antifa is born and bred uh, uh, in our academy, uh, 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 our, our colleges, our college, collegiate institutions, academia. Uh, they are been taught that um, violence is the way. They've been taught to hate this country. They're really essentially brown shirts of the liberal left coalition. And they, and they show up in, in a legitimate demonstration. They'll show up and uh, start creating violence. You know, they're a violent a, a group of people composed of, generally speaking, white rich kids who have been taught to hate their country and have been taught to uh, uh, seek violence as a solution to anything, okay? Born and bred in our collegiate universities. You understand that? Uh, they've been taught to, uh, they're, they're teaching that the uh, Constitution is a racist document, okay? The, the Constitution of the United States is a racist document, all right? Now, we could say that uh, uh, in the inception of the United States, slavery was an original sin. Okay, but they're, they're, they're wanting to push the idea that the Constitution itself is a racist document, which, you know, look, the Constitution, the brilliance of the Constitution is once we defeated the, the, the British, uh, no one grabbed for power. Washington didn't grab for power. Somebody else, I'm going to be the you know, king. No. You know, it's the, the, the Constitution is a power-sharing arrangement. Okay, that's the brilliance of it. No one grabbed for power. They said, look it, this is what we're going to do. We're, no one, we're not going to have a, a dictator. We're going to have a power-sharing government. Okay, that's what the Constitution is all about. Uh, and uh, it's a beautiful document. It's a very intelligent document. It's a divinely inspired document. It's a step forward uh, for humanity. But to declare it as a racist document is so badly bent, mentally bent, it's hard to imagine uh, someone would even say something like that. Some people that are uh, running for office are, are declaring that. You know, that the Constitution is a racist document of, in, of, in and of itself. So, uh, 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 you know, uh, how can a country survive uh, with uh, 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 academia teaching the students to hate this country? Uh, really, you know, look at we can we can discuss uh, this country and its it, it, its inadequacies and critique this country, uh, and that's fine. You know, we need it. That's how we grow. That's how we move forward. But you do it in the in the uh, envelope of of. of Loving this country, you, you you enjoy being in this country. You're 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 blessed to live in this country in a way. It's not all good, and it does need to be uh, improved. Uh, but but they're, they're, that's not not what they're doing in in the universities. They're teaching the kids to hate the country, and they're coming out of the universities compromised people, uh, filled with ideologies, uh, uh, hating this country. Uh, and uh, you know how does the country survive that way? You know I, I don't I don't I, you know we we got to admit this and we got to figure out how to handle this because as far as I'm concerned those those professors doing that they need to be relieved of being a citizen of this country they need to go somewhere else see that's how you feel about being in this country go you know fine we're going to send you somewhere where you think you're more accepted okay but but that's not going to be accepted in this country any longer teaching us kids to hate this country you understand that uh uh so uh uh, there's a, all these things are gender, gender identity, okay? Uh, the whole transgender issue, you know, which is a, a mystery to us all. Let's face it, we're not going to really understand it this lifetime exactly what's behind that. One uh, 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 galactic said that, look at it, somebody may prefer to come into a life as a female. That's, they, they, generally speaking, uh, prefer that that uh, way. Uh, and then they, but to balance things out, then they have to, after that three lifetimes as a woman, they have to come in as a male to balance things out. You know, that's how things work. Uh, and uh, uh, so they may long, and they may identify more as a woman, and they, they may long to be a woman uh, because that's what they're most comfortable with. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a tricky, tricky subject to, uh, to try to take apart. And uh, I admit that I don't understand. Uh, uh, I understand I've been w with uh, transgender kids, and there is something there. There's, there's uh, qualities there that uh, 
do seem to think seem make me think that there's a woman trapped in a you know a guy's body you know or the vice versa you know there I'll, I'll admit that uh, but how we handle that is is a very touchy subject and they're handling it in such a way they're doing such stupid things that's another source of bickering and fighting and 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 dysfunction in this society okay they're handling it so poorly the things they're doing uh, they 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 seem to they're they're, they're wanting to trans uh, a, a trans, a transgender person without the parents knowing about it or without them uh, uh, including the parents for some reason. Uh, and it's a, it's a very dangerous game what they're playing with this. I don't think the transgender issue is about transgenderism. I think it's about something else. And they're using that issue uh, to, 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 to promote some other sort of agenda that they, that they keep hidden. I, I only know that uh, uh, they're trying to separate in this issue the parents from their kids uh, and uh, 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 you know where the state almost becomes the, the, the provider for the, the kid and the, and the parents become secondary. But who knows really what's going on there. My, my suspicion though is that it's not about transgenderism, it's about something else and we're going to get to that whatever it is someday I, I'm telling you. Um, but all these things are ways of coming from academia that have us separated and apart, fighting and bickering right at the time when we need to be holding hands and moving forward. And intellectualism, pure and simple, is not going to get us to where we want to go. It's consciousness growth, spiritual growth, expansion, personal expansion, heart-centered thinking, uh, uh, higher, higher resonance, higher frequencies, higher vibrations, movement toward those, movement toward God. What, what, what are, where is God? Where does God uh, in, in this society, uh, wh what does the idea of God uh, mean? And it's, it's going to change from the old style religion into something new. Where it's going to birth something new, this understanding of God, because we are all God walking around in human form, all right? Uh, so to separate ourselves with God is, is, is a big, big, you know, is, is, is something that we're going to have to come to terms with, you know, let's face it. Uh, so uh, when they speak of darkness of intellectualism, that's what they're talking about, okay? Uh, all these things are criminals, <laughs> criminal acts perpetrated by intellectuals in our academic situations, and they have to be looked at, and uh, how we get rid of them or how we maybe transfer them, morph them, is going to be a challenge for this country, and probably for the world, too. Uh, uh, these things are, are popping head, uh, their heads up all over the place, but they're nothing but mischief, and uh, they are forcing themselves. You look, in the transgender issue, the beauty of, well, why would they come to us and say, you know, as a, as a, as a local citizenry saying, look, at, this is what we're coming up against in transgenderism. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, how, how, how do we want to handle this? You know, including us in how we want to handle the situation, whether it be, you know, transgender men in women's sports, uh, transgender men using fem women's bathrooms. All these things are very dicey, dicey areas that uh, are going to require some thought. And uh, they're not including us, they're forcing themselves on us, the way they're forcing themselves on our students, uh, rather than wanting to create the best, uh, best outcome in both instances, okay? Uh, let's hold it right there. Uh, but that's uh, the issue with uh, intellectualism, okay? It, it's gotten way out of hand because it's not backed by wisdom, okay? It's just people that are shooting off their mouths and they think they know things and they have gotten their ego stimulated with their pride and their prestige and their status and it's a bunch of bull crap more than not. Oh, there are some uh, area things, people that do seem to be okay. Uh, that is it. Uh, funny thought of the day, uh, we have our whole landscape being torn up right now. I mean, they're, they're, they're digging the land up, they're replacing everything, uh, and uh, 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 all I can say is I, I'd walk through the property and there's a lot of squirrels going, you know, and, okay, now where did I bury that nut? You know, they're having their nuts being torn up. Now, all of, you know, they remember, every nut they bury, they remember where they've done it, where they buried it. And uh, it's, uh, they're all starving now because their nuts are all torn up. Have you ever seen a squirrel bury a nut? It's one of the funniest damn things you've ever seen. I've seen it enough in our planter. They do it, they bury it in their planters and stuff we have in front. And they, they dig a hole and they pat the hole. It's, and they remember every nut they buried everywhere. It, it's really something to see. It looks human-like almost the way they, the way they uh, uh, do that. But there's a lot of uh, hungry squirrels around here going, you know, where is that nut? Uh, okay, that's the funny thought of the day. Uh, I am Jeff Africa, citizen of Earth, loyal patriot of the United States of America. And that's why I say this, loyal patriot of the United States of America, because I'm so 
pushed out of shape with what they're doing to the country. They're tearing the country up, and we can't really stand for it. Uh, uh, and we have to change that. Okay, so I want to make sure I assert that. Uh, Lloyd Perry, United States of America, and I stand unafraid. And these four, Mother Earth, Paramahansa Yogananda, Jesus Christ, Jeshua Ben Joseph, and uh, our Divine Mother. These four I've chosen to help me to get from my head to my heart, become and living from this heart, living from this heart center, becoming a heart centered being. Uh, none of these things, if we were heart centered beings, none of these things, according, you know, uh, with cancel culture, or wokeism, none of those things would be happening because those are things that are outside uh, the realm of, of wisdom, okay? None of them would be happening if we were heart centered human beings. That's why 